Known for being independent, gentle, and oh so sweet, the American Greyhound is the fastest breed of dog and officially recognized by the American Kennel Club since 1885. The Greyhound is one of the most ancient breeds known to man and can be traced to almost every continent on the globe. Coming up on this edition of the Paul Report, we'll talk more about the breed and also opportunities to foster this fascinating animal. So stay with us. Okaw Vet Clinic in Tuscola and Dr. Sally Foot remind you to properly take care of your pets and are happy to help support the Paw Report on WEIU. Okaw Vet Clinic located at 140 West Sale Street in downtown Tuscola. More information available at okawvetclinic.com. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Paw Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston. We are so glad that you've joined us for this episode of the Paul Report. We've got something special today. You know, we've been doing the Paul Report for several years now, and I'm pretty certain we have never done an entire episode on the American Greyhound. So today, that's what we're going to spend our time with. We're going to talk about these two beautiful gems and the breed of a Greyhound. And joining us today are also two special guests. We have Tamara Foss and we have Jeff Coggins with the American Greyhound uh, group. So thank you so much. Tamara is a volunteer and a rescue worker. And Jeff, you're the president of American Greyhound. So thank you. This is Martin. exciting. and. You know, we have two special guests and, and Tamara, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna introduce them, two special guys. So thank you for joining us today. Our pleasure, our pleasure. Let's thank, talk thank about you the, for having us. Yes, let's <laughs> introduce the, our two friends on the floor here. So this is Kenzie um, and this is Callan. Uh, Callan was the first uh, greyhound that I fostered um, and he joined the family <laughs> very quickly. He was a puppy um, uh, from a shelter in Decatur. And Kenzie came along um, about a year after uh, and is kind of his rock, really. Um, she has been a very settling uh, addition for him. He was a little nervous initially um, on his own. So she's kind of helped him settle in and, and they hang out and rely on each other quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. So. They don't go far from each other, that's, no, that, that's no. for sure. And she um, was the first uh, greyhound that I fostered for American Greyhound. Wow, so both of you, uh, Tamara and Jeff, how did, why greyhounds? What, what inspired you? What was your interest in this particular breed? They're beautiful, <laughs> um, that's probably one thing. Jeff? Well, y y y I'm from Northwest Indiana and every year at the county fair, they would, the, the organization, the American Greyhound was out there uh, long before I had a Greyhound. And, you know, we, we had heard different things about Greyhounds and we, we'd gotten a brochure, we kept in our dresser and we said, one of these years, one of these years. Um, one December, we went up to a local pet store and American Greyhound had a, a Santa Claus display and they were taking pictures. So we took our little terrier and my wife said when we were done, why don't we go back and see the greyhounds, see how she gets along. So we went back there and uh, met their greyhounds and she got along with them. I don't think she liked them that much, but <laughs> she got along with them. Uh, and I, we weren't ready to take another dog, but the lady that was there, she had one big male and we wanted a female. Aww. And I said, you know, we want a female. We're kind of thinking the spring, Christmas is not a good time to bring a dog into a home. Mm -hmm. She said, it's a good time for him. <laughs> so. Needless to say, the next day he came to our house Aww. and he was our first one, George. We named him George Bailey, obviously, because uh -huh. it was Christmas Yay. season. Yeah. Um, so I guess we kind of fell into it. Um, Tamara, I, you worked with Dobes. Yeah, I worked with um, Dobermans, uh, with the Doberman Rescue prior to um, finding American Greyhound and joining them. Um, and the main reason, just uh, the athleticism that these guys have to offer. Um, and they're a little bit um, 
they're more of a breed that they've grown up together with other sighthounds, mm -hmm. and they generally are very social with mm -hmm. other sighthounds. Um, whereas some of your protection breeds can be a little bit more, a um, little less into hanging out with other dogs. So I just kind of liked the idea of having dogs that would be buddies and right. also would be athletic. So. Let's talk about the breed. Um, the uh, American Kennel Association, they have put them in the hound group. And I think most people associate them with being fast dogs. And <laughs> well, let's go back to their origin. They came from Spain, didn't they? I mean, and, and, and greyhounds are probably known on just about every continent in the world. Well, actually, uh, Northern Africa, but they did, the Moors took them across to mm -hmm. Spain uh, and they worked their way around the Eastern end of the Mediterranean as well, in Arabia and up into Greece and uh, um, Rome and then eventually into the British Islands. Um, there are two trains of thought on, on the name Greyhound. Obviously, other than uh, Callan's face, there's not much gray going on there. Um, <laughs> personally, I like gray, as you can tell most of my face is gray. Um, but they're, they're obviously not named Greyhound because of their color. Uh, one, one train of thought was that uh, it, it was sort of a, a take on Grecian dogs, uh, Greek dogs. The other one was in, in old English, there's a, a, a term gray hunter for a hunting dog, and that's where they got it. Um, I really don't know, uh, but I... George Washington had a gray Yes, he did. Uh, <laughs> I believe his name was Traveler. Is that correct? I think I, you're right. I think you're right. Custer had uh, General gray Custer hounds. had a greyhound. So. Um, there was the... Uh, uh, the movie with Tom Hanks where uh, Julia Roberts had the Greyhounds. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Holmans that uh, own Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I believe her name is... Mary Holman. Yes. Mm -hmm. She has Greyhounds. And in fact, the Greyhounds that Julia Roberts used in the movie, I believe, belonged to her. Cool. Hmm. Um, what's, so, what's so great about uh, Greyhounds? What is their temperament like? <laughs> well, I suppose right I can right see there. they're a good example. <laughs> they're you being know, a good example right now. Most people associate them with greyhounds wanting to, all they want to do is run and run because they, the, they are the fastest breed, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. They can outrun a horse and they can <laughs> run about, what, 40, 45 miles an hour? Yeah. <laughs> Kenzie, come, come here. Come here, Whoop, Let's get you your foot. Your, you got your there foot caught. You go. There we go. <laughs> So yes, um, as far as sprinting, um, they do like a little zoom around the yard sometimes. Um, uh, oftentimes we'll call it getting the zoomies out. Mm -hmm. They'll zoom around, but then they're pretty happy after, after just a couple of little zoomies. Um, they'll come in and they like comfort. So they'll, you know, they enjoy a couch if you're allowing them to be on furniture and, um, or they'll, you know, find a nice good spot and on a nice comfy dog bed. They like to lounge. And, they yes. like to run and they like to lounge. Yep. What about the size and color and coat and, and really their physique? You know, they're very, they're very thick in the front and they're very thin and skinnier in the back. Well, if you take a look at their silhouette and place alongside a cheetah silhouette, you'll find that they're very similar. And unlike all other dogs, twice in each stride, all four legs are off the, the ground simultaneously, just like a cheetah. So they run basically like a cheetah, not quite as fast. Um, it, but their behavior also is like a cheetah in that they want to lay around like a cheetah would uh, until the prey comes along and it's dinner time. Then they, but um, I, that, that physique lends itself to uh, the way they run. You know, they extend and all four legs are off the ground. They, uh, I guess contract would be the, when they come right. back together and all four off the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll notice there's a good deal of, you can see the, gosh, I don't know what you'd call those, the, the loin muscles along mm -hmm. the back, mm -hmm. very, very strong. Um, we've seen Santa's little helper on the Simpsons. And we, in my expectation when I first met a greyhound was that it would be all skin and bones. And I was actually shocked um, to see the amount of muscle that they carried. And it all plays into the way they run and the, the ability to run as fast as they do. Mm -hmm. And their, their heads are very long and narrow, and they have excellent eyesight. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. Um, they're the one breed of dog that can virtually see yes. behind them. Yeah. 
And what do they what is what do they use that for? Was that in their their hunting or prey or chasing instincts? Well, uh, originally they would have used them, and in, in, in oftentimes it was you know the higher class of people that had the the dogs in ancient times. Mm -hmm. They would have used them for sport hunting, hunting uh, gazelles or jackrabbits in uh, uh, northern Africa or um, uh, Arabia, the Arabian area. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and likewise, on into Europe, they, they use them for. They continue to use them in uh, Spain. They refer to the dogs as galgos. Uh, some people will say that's uh, Spanish greyhound. They're a little bit different. Uh, actually, believe it or not, a little bit more athletic mm -hmm. than uh, <laughs> than our greyhounds. More nimble. So, mm -hmm. in fact, we we got a couple from Spain about a year and a half ago, and on on I just arrived at work, and my wife called me that. Our little galgo was up on the stove <laughs> and I thought she meant she had her legs up on the stove she says no she's up on the stove I mean this <laughs> dog could, from a standing standing still she could jump four feet so it was almost like keeping a monkey under control <laughs> I was extremely athletic but they uh. they continue to hunt rabbits in uh, Spain with with these greyhound like dogs galgos um, Let's but talk yeah. about their, their temperament, too. Um, as we can see, they're, they're sweet, lovable uh, animals. But, you know, what are they like in the home with you? And what are they like around children and, and other maybe other animals in the house, too? Um, each, each dog is going to have a different personality. So um, it's always going to be kind of individual to a certain extent. But for the most part, um, they're relatively calm and laid back. Um, they don't get too excitable. Um, they enjoy, you know, just being with their people, um, whether it's kids or adults. Um, and, you know, they just kind of like to hang out pretty much like, like these guys are doing here too. Mm -hmm. So um, they're not typically very vocal. Um, some can be, but um, or maybe howling on occasion at sirens, but but as far as barking, they're not a very barky dog. Um, they uh, get along with other dogs for the most part. Um, some of them are fine with small dogs and cats too. Mm -hmm. um, some will have a little bit higher prey drive, so they might be a little bit more focused on those smaller animals. Um, but, uh, but yeah, for the most part, they uh, enjoy being with their families and, and just kind of... Are they generally a healthy breed? Well, they're a bigger dog. Kenzie is a little bit smaller uh, uh, than Callan, but generally, are they healthy? Yeah, yeah. Um, you, would, you know, I think, I think one, of, um, one of our producers here said, do they have hip problems? Because it just, you know, just physically looking at them, right. they're, they're smaller and lankier in the back. We, I've never seen one with the hip problems we see in German Shepherds and uh, Labrador Retrievers. Uh, I, don't, I can't explain that not being a vet, but mm -hmm. my vet says the same thing. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for them to have his hip dysplasia? Absolutely. We've never seen it. He's never seen it. Um, the one thing that, that does afflict generally the racing greyhounds is osteosarcoma bone cancer. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, in, the veterinarians that I have talked to and, and heard speak uh, attribute that to the, you know, they're breeding for a particular uh, attribute in speed and the, the, the bone cancer goes along with it. Um, and, and, you know, most, most breeds of dogs do have that particular affliction that is uh, unique to them, or not necessarily unique, but, sure, but more breed. common to that breed. Yeah, and that, right. that's, uh, that's the racing greyhound, it's osteosarcoma. Mm -hmm. um, at one time, we saw some uh, you call it a, a seizure. We don't we we don't see a lot of seizure dogs, and we do occasionally see seizure dogs, but it's not prevalent like it once was. Um, but in, in general, they're they're a healthy breed. They're a healthy breed, and and uh, about a, a twelve year average lifespan, which is is pretty long for a dog of this size. That's you know, right. typically the smaller the dog, the longer they live, and. Uh, I think I told you earlier, the, f the first greyhound I ever touched, she passed away a couple of years ago, but she was 17 when she died, mm. which was... Great life. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, we've, uh, we're going to switch gears a little bit now, um, and thank you for sharing your knowledge on the breed, but we're also going to talk about um, two 
facets of greyhounds that are very close to your hearts, and that is uh, the adoption program, mm -hmm. uh, the greyhound rescue, and also the inmate experience program. So let's first talk about you know, fostering uh, greyhounds and, and that opportunity in central Illinois. Tamara? Well, fostering is awesome. I'll just say that. <laughs> um, it's it's very enjoyable to, to bring a foster into the home. And um, I'm thrilled that American Greyhound is one of the groups that um, they're officially uh, home-based in northern Indiana, but they opened up their reach to include us down in Champaign-Urbana, um, which was thrilling because um, it, it's fun to be able to have the dogs with you, um, you know, from a volunteer standpoint, um, because you can kind of feel like you're doing a little bit more versus, you know, just attending event, events mm -hmm. or um, just monetary donations. So, um, so fostering is good, not only for the dogs, um, because it, it truly helps American Greyhound accomplish all their goals because everything, you focus on the foster homes that you have with the dogs that you bring in because you can only handle so many dogs um, that you have enough fosters for. Right. So, right. Um, so it helps the group as a whole, obviously, um, accomplish the goals to help as many greyhounds as possible. Mm -hmm. um, Do you find that there's a lot of greyhound, a greyhound large population here in central Illinois? Are you encountering that? Um, it's funny that once I've started fostering and having greyhounds, you know, I never saw them before, <laughs> but when you get them, they kind of, they kind of attract each other. So <laughs> we, um, we actually have a, a greyhound walking group um, that meets um, Saturdays and Sundays and Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at eight o'clock at Meadowbrook Park in Champaign or in Urbana. Um, and we all walk together. So it's, nice. it's cool to see, you know, like eight to 12 dogs or something. That's mm -hmm. about as high as we've gotten so far, but um, as far as our max numbers, um, but it's, it's the sight to see all those dogs together mm -hmm. and people. And so there's typically comments from other walkers <laughs> during that time. If I could add something sure. too. Um, I was really excited when Tamara contacted me uh, about fostering and, and getting something going in central Illinois. And for what reason, I cannot give you an answer, but we historically have placed a lot of dogs in Champaign. Yeah. I don't know if, uh, one, I remember one going to Decatur. I don't remember any going to Bloomington, but we always placed a lot of dogs in Champaign. So it, it really fit nicely. And that probably a lot of the dogs that Tamara sees yeah. suddenly in Champaign-Urbana were dogs that we adopted previously. Um, so I thought it was a good fit for us. A lot of people said, well, that's a long ways away, but, but it really has worked out well. I mean, there, there's some frustrating things with the mm -hmm. distance, but um, that's something we had to do, and I was, I was excited to be able to do it. And the, the, we would like to increase that foster presence in central Illinois, not just Champaign, um, really anywhere that Tamara can, because she is our point person there, sure. um, anywhere that she could, uh, you know, help a family reasonably and get service. Family. Yeah, you, um, you, you've mentioned a couple of different times good fit. Uh, let's talk about that. What makes a good fit? What what family is a good fit to foster and eventually adopt a greyhound? Well, um, you know, we have a, a foster application. Basically, we're we're looking for a family that's not necessarily dog savvy because we can teach that, um, but that they're interested. We, we don't want a family that we're going to get a dog down here for them and then a day or two later they're going to they're going to back out of it. We want somebody that's committed to the dogs. Uh, it's a good maybe it's a family that's thinking about getting a greyhound. A perfect mm -hmm. opportunity there. They have no financial uh, investment in it is fostering. See how a greyhound would work in their house mm -hmm. and if it if it doesn't work out well they've learned without having to uh, make the commitment for a dog. Um, Generally, if we can develop a, a foster base, we start to develop an even heavier uh, adoption base, and there becomes more and more dogs, and we've got a greater outlet for our dogs, and uh, we can move more and more dogs from the racetrack or the shelter or wherever they may find themselves into our program. 
Tamara, what are some things that families can do with their greyhounds? You mentioned your walking program, which sounds excellent, and I know these guys like to walk and <laughs> run. But what are some other things if, if there's a family out there thinking, I, you know, I've been thinking about it, um, but I, I might need some guidance on what we can do together as a family. So um, greyhounds love to walk, um, so that's always something that um, at least all the greyhounds I've had and had as fosters, um, they've all really enjoyed going for a walk. So even if it's just a family walk together, um, some greyhounds, um, this guy loves to play fetch. So you can you know do things like that just in the backyard. But then even if you want to stretch out a little further and um, get into doing events, um, there's uh, lure coursing events that you can participate in. Um, there's straight racing events. Um, so it's, it's basically just doing things for fun. Um, and you can sometimes get ribbons, <laughs> um, depending on how the dogs do, but um, the dogs just enjoy those official activities per se sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, certainly there's always just the, the general outings that you can do as a family. Ride in the car. You know, yeah, <laughs> you exactly. Um, go for a jog. Sure. Um, but, but yeah, there's um, lots of different competitive things um, as a, just a general dog owner, um, obedience classes that you can um, uh, focus on and work on. Agility is another opportunity through, you know, dog training clubs. Um, Barn hunt is another activity um, that uh, is becoming quite popular amongst a lot of different, you know, breeds of dog too. So, so the events are, you know, all dog type events that can be enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them, just the lure coursing and the straight racing are more specific to, to kind of your hounds. sight hounds. Yeah, exactly. So, Jeff, talk about um, the other program I definitely wanted to hit on um, in this episode was the inmate experience involving greyhounds. Uh, what is it and how long has it been going on and is it happening in our area? Uh, I believe it, there's something like that over near Indianapolis, so it's a, a, a few hours away. Uh, the, the program we participate in is in Coldwater, Michigan, which is in uh, South Central Michigan. Uh, we participate, it's called TGIE, the Greyhound Inmate Experience. Uh, there's three organizations involved, American Greyhound, uh, GEM, uh, uh, Greyhounds of Eastern Michigan near Detroit, and Allies for Greyhounds of Western Michigan. Uh, there are 20 total dogs in the program with 40 inmate handlers, two per dog. They teach the dogs basic obedience. They teach them uh, the, the skills they need to earn their Good Citizenship Award. We became involved with that program in 2000, end of 2009, first of 2010. The, the track in Kenosha, Wisconsin was shutting down and they needed the remaining dogs to stay put so they could continue their schedule of, show of races. Um, so we couldn't get dogs. There, there were no dogs grading off Kenosha and, and we didn't have the resources we do now to get dogs, so we were kind of stumped. And one of our volunteers was contacted, could we take this dog? And I met him, his name was Dusty. I was amazed, he could sit on command, shake hands. It was amazing to me. Uh, and the, she said, here's the number for the, the lady that runs it. And I called her later that day and we talked. And my only interest in the program at the time was here was an opportunity for us to have dogs that were being fostered in this facility and we didn't have to tie up our foster homes so we could we could help more dogs and that kind of segued into uh, well not segued it, it 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 became a bigger deal to to us after i attended a graduation was able to go inside the prison and i won't lie to you i was a little nervous at first but uh it, it's a it, it's it's a large facility with about 1200 guys in it i believe and it's a more of a barracks so there was everybody's walking around but uh, the guys were outstanding they did fantastic things with their dogs and i got to see that that this program was more than just an opportunity for us to help more dogs we were helping 40 men inside that that prison um, many of them had never had an experience with a dog like one of these and you could see, I mean, it, some of them were brought to tears when they would get up and, and talk about their experience. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it, it is really, really amazing uh, 
uh, and, and sometimes that's not popular to talk about. I mean, these guys have committed crimes, and they're, they're, there's no choir boys in there. But you know what? Everyone that I've ever talked to said they're there because they're supposed to be there, and you can see there's some transformation in them from being a part of this program. But it's the power of a pet, Correct. as we see here today. Correct. Yeah. Tamara and Jeff, it's been a pleasure. Um, I've fallen in love with these two. They've been all <laughs> over, they've been kissing, and they're just loungers, and it's been so fun to hear more about the breed and about the programs that you're associated with. It's, um, you know, we need more people like you out there uh, saving breeds and, and cheerleading for, for good breeds like the Greyhound. So thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you being part of the Paw Report today. Well, thank, thank you, you for you. having us. Yeah, thank and thank you, you so Kenzie much. and Callan. You guys can, can <laughs> continue with your nap. We're going to end the program though right now. And thank you for joining us for this episode of the Paw Report. We'll see you next time. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Paw Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, Authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston. Okaw Vet Clinic in Tuscola and Dr. Sally Foote remind you to properly take care of your pets and are happy to help support the Paw Report on WEIU. Okaw Vet Clinic located at 140 West Sale Street in downtown Tuscola. More information available at okawvetclinic.com. Mm -hmm.